Hello and welcome back. In our last session, we got introduced to Docker Compose and we also saw how it can tame the complexity of multi container applications. We learned about the Docker Compose.yaml file and also the essential commands like Docker Compose up and Docker Compose down. But we left a couple of big questions on the table. How do we handle sensitive information like passwords? And how do we actually convert a real project to use Compose? Today, we are going to answer those questions and more. We will dive into environment variables for configuration, get our hands dirty with a real lab, and then peek at some advanced features that make Compose incredibly powerful. Let's level up our Compose skills. Now, before we dive into the details, if you found this content helpful, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow and allows me to keep making more videos just like this one. Let's get started with this. First up, let's talk about a crucial best practice, keeping secrets out of your code. So whenever we talk about your code, one of the best practices we always talk about is uh, never hard code your sensitive information like password within your code. The same applies in your docker compose file as well. Let's look at our previous compose file. So here uh, within the compose file, we have this environment variable over here. And here if you see, we have hard coded our variable. Now this is fine for a non sensitive value. But what about a database password? You should never hard code a password directly in your compose.yaml file, especially if you're committing that file to a version control. The solution here is to use environment variables and Docker Compose has a brilliant built-in way to handle them using a file called .env. So essentially for this, you will be creating a separate file called uh, .env and then you will be defining all of your variables and the values of those variables within this file. So let me show you first within the yaml file you know we will um, use the variable name syntax to reference the environment variables so let's rewrite our uh, compose uh, file so what i'll do here is in addition to this um, uh, redis host let me also set my db password and then i'm going to reference my variable here And then let's have uh, one more service over here. Let's call this as uh, database. And then the image I want to use is Postgres 13. And then my environment is Postgres password. And we will refer the same. So here, if you see, I have defined my variable and then the variable value, which is basically, you know, I'm telling that the value is stored somewhere else and the same I'm using here as well. Now, where does database underscore password come from? This is the magic part. Docker Compose automatically looks for a file named dot env within the same directory as your docker compose dot yaml file. So go ahead and create this file and then within this file, you can define your variable. So the basically the variable name, whatever you have defined and then the value. So let's say secret password one to this something. And then maybe you can have uh, more variables. That's totally up to you. So let's say we put 5000 and then so on. So you see that the actual secret value lives in the .env file. And the golden rule is you must add this .env file to your .git ignore file to prevent this file from being ac accidentally committed to your version control. So let me save this file and we can do this uh, docker compose up. And what will happen is my docker will read the .env file. It will inject the value that we have stored here. It will inject that to my services and your app will work perfectly without any secrets being exposed in your uh, main configuration. All right, so let me use this ampersand. So I'm running this as a background process and done. So it's a simple pattern, but it's absolutely fundamental for professional Docker usage. All right, theory is great, but let's get our hands dirty. 
Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to create a multi-container application that consists of a web app, a ready service for caching and a custom network into a Docker Compose file. I will walk you through it step by step. In your project directory, go ahead and create a new file called docker compose.yaml file and let's start by defining the version and the services. So here I'll create a new directory. Let's call this as a project and let's go to that project and we will create our new file called docker compose.yaml. So here this is my yaml files. I have my version, I have my services, I have the redis. And then I have the web service already. So I'm using this particular image. And for the web, we will be building a Docker file. I've defined my ports and then my environment variable. Now for this, what I'll do is I want to I want to define this as a, a variable. So let me copy this and let me remove this from here so that um, we can declare a variable. So let's say dollar and let's call this as Redis URL variable. And then let me save this and we will create the dot env file and we will have the variable over here so we will call the variable so which is redis uh, url var and then the variable so basically i don't want to hard code anything so it can be used for non-sensitive uh, sensitive information for anything but the point is uh, try to define your variables within this dot env file all right and now let's go ahead and build this now before we build this if you notice the uh, compose file we are we are not uh, creating any network manually compose will automatically um, create a default network for us the web service can automatically connect to the uh, redis service using the service name over here as the host name so this is the service discovery in action and then the depends on key replaces our manual effort to start things in the correct order so basically i'm telling my web service needs to wait for the ready service to start first and then the web service needs to be created now the moment of truth let's navigate to the project directory so here we will run our command docker compose up and then i'm using this i've been built i'll explain that in a bit and then ampersand so that my um, uh, uh, the the services are running in the background so this hyphen hyphen build flag basically tells compose to rebuild the image for the web service from your docker file so here if you can see you know it is it is using using the cache because we don't have any um, uh, changes so, and you can see here my application is up so now let me open up a different terminal so that uh, i can quickly show you let me take the instance ip and uh, let's hit this on power port 5000 and you can see i'm able to see my application code so your app should be working exactly you know the way it was doing in the last session but now this is managed as a single declarative unit so essentially if you can if you can see here my uh, uh, uh python application is able to connect to my redis which is declared as a uh, variable and i'm using the dot env file where i've declared the variable and it is able to use that my docker compose is able to use that and it is able to uh, talk to my redis uh, host and it is able to so if i refresh this for example if you see you can see this is basically being stored within my redis database all right so that's that's basically how we can make use of your dot env file so once again please keep in mind that whenever we're talking about um, uh, your docker compose always try to make use of your dot env file to declare your variables so let me stop this and uh, once you're done working with this please go ahead and uh, remove everything so you can use the docker compose down command and that's it you have successfully containerized um, an application and orchestrated it with Docker Compose. This is a huge step forward in your DevOps journey. I'll share all these files within my GitHub repo. Uh, I have this already, but I'll share the link to this so you can also try it out. So let me just run this Docker Compose down command and this should remove everything for me. All right. Now that you have got the fundamentals right, let's look at some advanced features that can help you manage more complex real world scenarios. The first thing we have is a dependency management with depends on. We have briefly used this in the uh, session. So here, if you look at the Docker compose file, so here I'm using this uh, depends on. Now, 
This simply controls the order of startup of your containers. But it's important to know that depends on only waits for the container to be running, not necessary for the service inside like the database to be ready. For more robust health checks, you can use the condition syntax, but for most development process depends on is sufficient. So this is your depends on example. So in this case, I'm telling that that my Redis container needs to be created first and then the web container needs to be created. Second, we have your build configurations. So I've used this uh, build over here. So this is your build configuration, which is simple. But you can provide much more detailed instructions using the build key as a dictionary. So here I can say build and then I can say. So here if you see I'm, I'm passing this build configuration. So that's another advanced feature that we can use within your compose file. This can be incredibly useful for having different Docker files for development and for production. Like in this case, if you see here, I'm telling you to use this Docker file dot dev. So this will specifically build my Docker file by looking at this file. And then I'm telling that this is for my uh, development or, my, or for my production. And then also I have this args um, uh, argument over here. We'll be talking more on this in the next session, but this is another way how we can pass your variables. This is your runtime variables. So whenever you have different, different Docker files, and if you want to use those Docker files based on your environment, we can use this build configurations. And finally, one of my favorite features is your profiles. Profiles allow you to define services that should only be started in specific situations. Think of development only tools or debugging utilities or any alternative services. For example, let's say you only want a Redis commander service, which is a GUI for Redis to run when you're in the development mode. So here, for example, if you see, so we'll have the web uh, uh, configuration over here, the Redis configuration over here. And then you see this another service that I'm creating. So this is basically a GUI for your Redis. And you see these profiles over here. This is where I'm defining it. Now, if you just run the Docker Compose up command, it will only start the web and Redis services. The Redis commander service is ignored. To start it, you'll have to explicitly activate the dev profile. So essentially, um, in your uh, Docker Compose command, you'll have to say Docker Compose hyphen hyphen uh, profile and then the name of the profile that you have defined. And then I will say up. Or the other way we have is Docker Compose up hyphen hyphen profile dev. So we use this particular command when you want to start all the services with the dev profile. So this is a clean, powerful way to manage different environments and optional components within a single comp compose file. So by default, the uh, if I just run the Docker compose, it will start the web service and the Redis service. It will not start this Redis commander service. I'll have to explicitly pass the profile uh, flag to tell that, hey, I want to start this particular uh, service as well. So that's where we can make use of your profile. So these are some of the advanced features that you can use within your Docker Compose file, um, especially when you're experimenting and you want, you're, you're working in a development mode you can make use of this. Uh, .env is something very commonly used. Uh, different, different Docker files is again, obviously when you want to experiment with uh, uh, different, different Docker files for different, different environments. And then profiles is when you are in experimenting, you want to use development tools or basically any anything internal. That's where we make use of it. And that's all for this session. So you have taken a huge leap forward. You now know how to securely manage configurations with .env files. You have successfully converted a, a real project to use Docker Compose in our hands-on lab. And you have seen a glimpse of the advanced power that profiles and build configurations gives you. You are no longer just running containers. You are orchestrating and designing your application's infrastructure as code. In our next session, we will talk about some advanced Docker file techniques like multi-stage builds and few more things like uh, ENV versus ARG, CMD versus entry point. If you found this session helpful, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more content and let me know in the comments section if you have any queries. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next session.